delighted to have Eric Dever. Thank and you. Who is the artist? And Helen Harrison, who is uh, a historian and a com commentator. And I'm going to just do a little intro so you know a little bit more about them. And then I will hand it over to them. So now, Eric Dever. Eric Dever got his MA at NYU in 1988. And he has been a working painter, fine artist, for over 30 years. He's had multiple solo exhibits on both the East Coast and the West Coast. But I wanted to just highlight his most recent uh, solo exhibit at the Barry Campbell Gallery in Chelsea, New York, uh, which drew lots of crowds. It was very, very successful and really it lured us to Eric. So we are very thankful for that exhibit. And it was called Painting in a House Made of Air. It happened only a year ago, around this time. Eric's work is in public collections, uh, including the Gray Art Gallery, uh, NYU, Guild Hall in East Hampton, the Parish Art Museum in Watermill. And at the Parish Art Museum, he does workshops, so you can sign up. We so. do. <laughs> Internationally, Eric's work is in, uh, shown in the U.S. Consulate in Hong Kong and Macau through the U.S. Department of State Art and Embassy Program. So we're, we're delighted, Eric, and also delighted to have Helen Harrison. Helen Harrison is known for, I've, I've followed her for many years as she wrote for the New York Times, uh, reviews, feature articles, but overall, Helen is a historian, an art director, oh, sorry, excuse me, a museum director, a journalist, and her specialty is modern American art. She also is a stu studies studio arts mm -hmm. at Adelphi and at the Brooklyn Museum Art School. Helen is a curator. She's curated for the Parish Art Museum, Guild Hall, and since 1990, she has been the director of the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center in East Hampton. Helen's an educator. She taught at SVA and today is an adjunct professor at Stony Brook University in the Art Department, Art History Department, and Art Criticism. You may have heard her as a radio commentator on 88.3 <coughs> where she did art waves for five years. Um, so um, when, she, when she was writing for the Times, she's writing for the, the Long Island section, and she's also an author. She co-authored Hampton Bohemia, which is a book we have in our collection here. She wrote a monograph on Jackson Pollock and one on Larry Rivers, and I guess it's fairly recently has done two mystery novels. So we are overjoyed. <laughs> so with that, I hand the program to you. I just felt my life flash before me. <laughs> Thank you, Marjorie. And it's great to have an opportunity to speak to an artist about his own work in a space where the work actually is. You know, when I was studying art history, we used to call it the history of slides. Because <laughs> you, you were not, you know, in the presence of the work. And here we have a chance to look at it and discuss it in the flesh, so to speak. And the first question I wanted to ask you was, about the, the themes that you pursue. You have, obviously, nature as your subject, but why these specific elements or motifs in the natural world? Um, I think we can safely divide it um, between um, two interests, and, and one of them, the first one, um, will be the, uh, the, the blue hued paintings of summer that are that are evocative of landscape and or or more my experience of landscape and then the um the the work that is has a wider palette that seems floral in nature um comes from firstly from an interest in color some of the works are are cued to certain seasons particularly early spring middle spring and late spring. And, um, and then some of the other work is a little bit, has to do with, with memory or color memory. Um, um, but that's largely, um, still falls within the realm of the, uh, the floral inspired 
Well, they're clearly not literal. No. Uh, some of them are more obviously floral. In fact, we, when we were standing over there at the refreshment table, one of the other students was saying, oh, well, he recognized the cherry blossoms. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly see they're, they're the color of cherry blossoms, of course, but they're really, really up close. It's not like a typical twig or a limb with cherry blossoms on it. it you really have zeroed in on the thing, but you've also simplified them. So it clearly isn't that you're trying to represent the flower or the landscape. It's more, a, I suppose, a subjective response to it. Um, well, it it again, it, it's it has to do with my experience of the of the uh, in this case the uh, cherry blossom. It's a Kwanzaa cherry tree that I planted um, early um, early last spring. Um, but often I approach the I articulate the negative space, or I paint the negative space to articulate the um, the image, and so so one might notice that the petals themselves are not particularly painted. Mm -hmm. um, some are to, to create uh, a sense of uh, volume and, and space. Um, but that, I'm also interested in, in some of these works in, in um, paint consistency. Paint itself has been one of my interests. And so um, I think that the paint thickness and the um, lean quality Again, it's not a kind of, uh, not, not representation as such, it's more uh, something that is evoked when you look at a flower, you may concentrate on the color, you may concentrate on the form, but there are brush strokes, it's clearly paint yes. on canvas and not uh, trying to disguise that or, or hide the, the artist's touch. Yeah, um, that, that's absolutely correct. There, and there's a number of ways of working in that painting in particular. Um, some areas are applied with um, a squirt bottle, and other areas um, are, are with a, um, um, it's not an aerosol product, but it's a pump um, air spray where I may, I'll use a bicycle pump and fill a canister. Oh, I'd love to watch that. And, uh, <laughs> it sounds like fun. It, well, it, it sort of is, and, uh, <laughs> and it takes a lot of work to get the paint into the can. And, uh, well, like, what is it? Pollock said technique is just a means of arriving at a statement. That's so true. whatever works, right? That's right. And, uh, but for the most part, I, you know, I, I am interested in, in exploring um, n new ways of laying down paint, but for the most part, I I stick to some rather conventional practices and I work with knives quite a bit and, and there's some imprinting where I apply um, paint more recently to glassine and I'm able to, to uh, rub it in. Like an offset type of thing. Exactly. And, so, and some people think that they're, they're reminiscent of, or, they, or, or they're, they're prints, but it's, it's really just that the paint seems to rest more on the surface. So it's more like, a, almost like a monotype. Yes, very much so. A very crude one. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I was never very good at, at printmaking in school. I've always admired it, but I think maybe it's my failure in that that has helped me to, to somehow mm -hmm. try to you know, examine that in the course of my own life. But with that, you don't need a press anyway. I mean, you no. don't have to have all the equipment. You can just do it on your kitchen table or on your, on your kitchen counter. Exactly. But a lot of these works, like with the blue series over here, they're very atmospheric. I mean, you really feel like a sense of heavy atmosphere or a sense of maybe clouds moving in and out. But again, without it being literal, it's just a sense of the experience of being in the landscape and being mm, involved with whatever's going on as it's, as it's happening. Well, um, Helen, as it is, that, that is uh, a, a real part of of this work for me. I, I'm not a plein air painter. Mm -hmm. I admire I the tradition. I was going to ask you that, whether or not you do these not, <clears throat> not at all, but I do spend, <coughs> for, a, for a long time, I've, I've, I've looked at some of these landscapes, and, and uh, more recently, I've decided that I'd like to, I decided to visit them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in this case, this, this one is Clam Island, and you can reach it through a narrow peninsula on foot. Um, it's, it, it's next to the Morton Wildlife Reserve. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> but I went there during the summer at nightfall, or, or dusk rather, and I, and I brought 
something I wanted to eat, and I sat there. I, I paid attention to um, what was happening. A boat went by, just mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. and somebody walked by with their dog. And and uh, and but the real story was the um, was the summer twilight mm -hmm. and 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 this twilight this time of year um, in the in the northeast it, it's really only where it occurs but it's referred to um, among English speakers as as the gloaming mm -hmm. and and the French of course refer to it as as mm -hmm. vert bleu mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's a it's a long twilight that lasts. Um, even past sunset for about an hour. Because it's so flat, the sun is peaking yes. down. I mean, it's not like in the mountains where the sun goes down at three o'clock in the afternoon yes. in the middle of the summer. Yeah. So you get that that very ambient, uh, just a glow that comes through. And, and if it's a cloudy day, you can get some amazing effects. It um, that was <coughs> that was my sensation. Um, it's really sitting there was how the how that canopy descended and, and how long it stayed. And, and then, but the other, some of the other work too, um, it does involve a, a material component. And in this case, there's not a lot of paint on the center can, uh, linen rather, but, but the paint that I did use is, it, it, it activates the negative space and w where it's perceived really as sa as sand, which in some ways is, is sort of close to the to, to that linen in particular, um, and it deals with the reflection of the sky. Mm -hmm. The ones behind us, these are Montauk. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, it's a completely different landscape out there with the bluffs and the rocks, and it's much more much more rugged, and certainly you get some amazing skies out over the water there. Um, again, and in terms of landscape, I think <coughs> the, uh, the, the forms at the top really are, of course, the, they're, it's negative space again, that's representative of, I, I, of the lighthouses, but I wasn't so interested really in in, in that aspect of, of the landscape. It really was the experience of walking on the stone mm -hmm. <clears throat> all the way around the, 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 the lighthouse. And, and that, was, that was really what I focused on. Um, it was, it was my, my chief interest. And uh, um, the rocks are rather treacherous. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to be careful, mm -hmm. but uh, that's where I spent most of my time, mm -hmm. was, was just walking there. Uh, you, uh, did you live in California for a while? I did. Mm -hmm. I was born in Los Angeles. Because uh, uh -huh. it's sort of a California color in the garden there, I think. And then you've got contrasting that with a sort of more uh, East Coast uh, atmosphere. How do you reconcile those? Things? Well, I think some of this is just personal palette or color color affinity and uh, um, um, I <clears throat> as far as maybe some some Europeans um, would prime their canvases with a with a uh, deep kind of a deep red um, um, perhaps I, I gravitate towards a more more of academy of orange mm -hmm. and it's just a color I've always liked mm -hmm. and so of course I find any excuse to work with it, or, or if I see it in anything vaguely that's orange, I, I, I just, I just, it, it activates the, the, the um, palette for me. Somehow it found its way into Trout Pond. I, I, yeah. I'm pretty familiar with Trout Pond, and I don't actually ever remember seeing Paddy Orange over there, but uh, you are the painter, so it's your well, prerogative. Well, it, it's, it, it's the, the thing about the pond that I find so interesting is that is that there <clears throat> there are layers in the pond. And there's the surface, of course. There's what lies beneath, which um, in in this case some some very fluffy kind of freshwater seaweed. There are fish in that pond. There are trout in that in that pond and snapping turtles. Snapping turtles, I have encountered. Yeah, and there's also <clears throat> some lilies in the pond as well. As well as the reflection of the um, um, opposite bank mm -hmm. and the sky, I decided. I have to say, <coughs> the painting, as 
transformed quite a bit. When, when I began working on it, I was, really, I was really interested in one of the signature paintings, Helen Frankenthaler paintings at the Paris Art Museum this summer. And it sort of became a visual mantra for me. But the, and so um, I think I willed that orange into it. It could be, it could be fish-like, it could be the, the sun. It, and, and, and at a certain point, it, there, there are some elements of, uh, the, of it's, it's fiction, of course, and, and uh, maybe that, that, that greenish um, yellow spot in the center, too, but it's something one could pass through. You mean kind of an entry point into the, the, the imagery beneath? Uh, and, and even metaphysically, as like a portal or something, mm -hmm. um, it, it held that interest for me. Well, that layering, of course, gives it a lot of ambiguity, yes. so that it isn't uh, something that you just see on the surface, but you realize that there's something beneath it and something reflected in it, and I think that visually is very appealing to me. Thank you. But the idea of using reflected light, or reflected imagery, that things that are outside the, um, the view is also very intriguing because it, it can be changing too. The clouds will be moving, yes. of course. The water will be rippling. Yes. But you say you don't do these things on plein air. You're no, not no. Them. So do you make sketches ahead of time? Um, no, not really. Um, I begin just by painting and laying down paint. And, and uh, I often have a palette in mind. It's almost but but mm -hmm. it's something that occurs uh, through through layering, and I bring order to it as I go. But but uh, I don't usually have uh, a, a preconception. And sometimes there are other paintings that 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 interest me, that that inform the work, and mm -hmm. and I digest those, and and uh, <clears throat> um, and I end up some, mm -hmm. somewhere more personal. Well, you, you did mention that you have a fondness for Claude Monet, and yes, I think we yes. could see that. It, there's even a little water lily over there, and yeah. that one. But and yet, obviously, you're not copying or, or working after Monet. You've got no. a, a much more personal approach. What um, is your really favorite experience in nature that you that you feel that maybe you have, haven't quite captured it yet, but something that you really want to capture? Um, I think it really happens when when it's sort it, it would it's it's as though planets and stars line up. Mm -hmm. I'd say when I have a number of interests that 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 line up all together. When when perhaps. Uh, uh, I see a certain color or certain forms. They, they, um, um, memory is activated. Um, I, I, I think of uh, sometimes um, literature, and and some of my works are are titled after after characters from from literature mm -hmm. that that somehow become part of uh, uh, um, my experience of of the thing, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, I'd say that's sort of a rounded answer, but but it, it would be when a number of interests line up mm -hmm. and and uh, are, are held together. Now there are no human figures in any of this series. Is that that's clearly deliberate? I mean, you have a choice. You can put if people walk along the beach, you can put them in or leave them out. But was that something that just didn't interest you? The interaction of the human figure with the landscape or with the garden? Um, for the most part, m most of these experiences have been have been solitary, mm -hmm. and I suppose I place myself in the the landscape. I think um, to 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 quote someone that that part of your st story, um, um, uh, um, I'm. I am nature, therefore I'm part of it. Uh, um, but but uh, I'm an abstract painter, and so uh, sometimes I, in, in in some of these works they 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 seem to, to to move closer to certain forms that we perceive as particular flowers. But but other ones have nothing to do with that. And the same thing is with the landscape as, as well. Um, I think of them really as as paintings or as pictures. 
and I use the word landscape loosely, uh, but but they're they're um, I, I think compressed histories and and essentially abstract work. Well, I think we should open it up to questions. Would, does anyone have any comments or questions? It doesn't have to be a question. It could be a, a response if you like. Yes. Um, that is a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, uh, it's a line from, a verse from poetry. <laughs> what is it? Um, it's a poem, it's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a line from, from a poem by, by the, um, um, poet, novelist, playwright, Joe Pinturo, um, and it's from, Rainbow Box, a collection of four boxes, uh, four, uh, four books, and uh, the, tie, the the verse is, our son can't cannot catch up to thee, which or or or, 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 or we cannot catch up to thee, which really is the is just how the son continues and life, life um, is secondary to to the activity of the sun and planets. Well, the, of course, the sunflower in, in French is tournesol because it turns yeah. with the sun. Yes. So it's turning, it's a turning, it's a sun shape in itself, and it's turning toward the sun as the sun progresses through the sky. So it's actually, obviously, one of those wonderful motifs that artists really love, but it can be kind of, I suppose, cliched. But it can you, be. But yes. when you put it into a, a, a poetic context like that, I think that really makes it even more meaningful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, John. Yeah, hi, I'm John Stavak. I teach uh, two dimensional design here at the college for many years. And I just wanted to thank you very much for bringing these beautiful banquets of paintings to Marjorie. And Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> what we do at Suffolk here at my class, I see a couple of my new students in design. We see a show like this, I give them assignments, index assignments. What we, what we do is we pull art apart, we deconstruct it. Seven elements of art, line, shape, form, et cetera, et cetera. So we pull it apart and we try to figure out where the artist, what he's, he or she is trying to say or render. And then we reconstruct it, we build it back up. It's like taking an old car, pulling the car parts apart and then assembling it back. It's a great, terrific learning laboratory and gallery for students. Because when they leave my class, I, I think the average, maybe Helen can, I think the average person spends three or four seconds, five seconds before each painting at the Met or the Guggenheim, you know. And uh, this is good because they really pull it apart. And we notice a style here, semi-abstraction, abstraction, and you sort of like vacillate between you know, different canvases and everything. So this is a terrific experience, and for everybody on campus too, for everybody to experience this beautiful work. One of the elements of the course is color. So I say to my students, what's the outstanding element of all the elements? And of course color, then comes shape and form and line and everything. So it's, it's a very interesting undertaking, and we spent the whole semester Looking at artwork, you know, Andy White, Jack Pollock, and all the artists, uh, you know, that are out there. So by the time they leave my class, they look at art in a much different view than they normally would. So thank you so much. Oh, by the way, I live in Sag Harbor. I'm about eight minutes away from Trout Pond. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've seen the snapping turtles. You know, my kids are small. Oh my God, it was close call, you know, you see my banks <laughs> there, and this big shadow comes up, you know, years and years ago in the 80s. I said, what is that? They're pretty scary. Oh, <laughs> very scary. <laughs> and yeah, so that was my introduction to Trout Pond, you know, it's a beautiful pond. I keep going back, I'm a photographer using traditional black and white film, so I go maybe like you do seasons and everything like that. And I think I was talking to you before of my students, I think we came here on, uh, what did we come here on? Wednesday, didn't we come over? Yeah, we came over here on Wednesday. And I think 
I was talking to before, almost everybody out of my 18 students picked the Monty Python. Mm -hmm. and one out of three. Mm -hmm. and, and then we go into questions, well, why did you pick that thing? What do you see in that? What's going on with the elements like that? So we pull it apart, and it's a component part. So, uh, you know, I've been down there photographing you know, among the rocks. You've got to be very, very careful mm -hmm. about the plates that come in. And out. So I can relate to that. I can relate to uh, uh, the Trout Pond series. But you know, you've got you got semi-abstraction over there, you've got more pure abstraction over here. So this is wonderful style that you're vacillating, you know, back and forth. So thank you very much for having a show on well, our campus. Thank, thank you. It's a real pleasure to be yeah. here. And, yeah. and I think the student body has wonderful faculty and is really fortunate to, to be studying here. Um, it's an exceptional right. oh. place. Right. Got it. You have two questions? Yeah. <laughs> two hands up. You had a question? It's a really long time since I skied into the trout pond. You talked all uh, about putting your paint on. Do you take the paint off? Sometimes I do. Um, um, I don't saturate the, the surface with, with paint um, as, say, Helen Frankenthaler would. Um, uh, I, I treat the surfaces with a, with a, a PVA size. I work in oil, but it's an acrylic size that protects the surface from the degradation of oil through, through time. And I suppose I could saturate the, the um, surface, but instead, I somehow that, that treatment, I prefer having the paint resting more on, on the surface. And, and I like having some of the um, actual painting surface available so uh, as though I could go into it. Um, um, I think it, it, it breathes and, and it, it, it alludes to the, uh, the, the, idea, the painterly illusion itself of depth without really working a lot with complicated perspectives or glazes and things. It's just a very, it's a very simple, simple way I can access it. Um, well, it's interesting. The the work that that uh, I was involved with for that was largely <coughs> monochromatic. Um, since I wasn't really working so much with color, I was working with more the materials and methods of painting or paint paint quality itself. Um, what does it mean to paint on canvas, linen, burlap? What what does it feel like to use different grades of, of material? Um, the, the painting implements. So all of that became the subject. And, and then, and then um, as far as, and, and so some of that comes through here. I, I certainly wouldn't have um, felt so comfortable with, with negative space or leaving, leaving large areas of unpainted surface if I hadn't had that, that experience or that, uh, that familiarity with, with the, with the um, medium. Um, but as far as direction, um, this is all work from 2019, and, and um, honestly, many of the paintings are preparatory um, for, for larger works, and I feel it's, it's useful to, uh, not to edit myself, to leave, leave myself open to, to whatever um, ideas occur. I think if I try to to um, quiet them or, or overlook them, it, it uh, I, I don't I think that's wrong at this point. But but I I, I will say I think uh, um, color will, is something I continue to feel interested in the, this this palette on this wall. And so it is a it's a sort of a tension that I'm working through. I do, I, I tend to think this the work on this wall this degree of completion of the landscape. Is is probably, and maybe the the work in the back, um, but I, I, I think that 
in the, for the foreseeable future, that, that that's what I'll be, be doing, is looking more closely at that. And we certainly have a, a lot of linear um, um, coast. I mean, a lot of, a lot of area to, to explore all around our narrow Long Island. So um, <clears throat> I, I look at it as an adventure. Um, Eric, I was going to ask the question, but Christina sort of um, beat me to it a little bit. But what was the spark that um, took the work away from a very rigorous structure um, to a much greater freedom and, and sort of a diff whole different sensibility? Was there one thing that just happened, that, or was it just a process? Uh, I think it. I think it's. Uh, you mean from work that was that was more reductive mm -hmm. and. And uh, well, um, it had to do somewhat with process and the materials that the, that I was working with. For instance, I, I relied quite a bit on a knife, and I made concentric circles that radiated out to three feet and sometimes squares um, with just the width of a knife. They weren't measured. But then, but then, when I began working with transferring pigment on paper, somewhat as maybe. Um, do the they might do, um, and applying them to surfaces, it, it just by nature of the material it opened up. The other thing I found very useful is that that my experience um, working in the um, um, uh, parish, the parish art museum adult studio program, I would be assisting other people doing things or presenting ideas that weren't necessarily how I painted, and <clears throat> and suddenly I began to become more interested in what they were doing at times. <laughs> and I found that that was, that was wonderful to have that wash back into to my own work. So I think, I think those two things did it. Because that was one of the pleasures of art school, is that you're kind of all in it together. Yeah. And especially where, when uh, I went to art school in England, and we had a big studio that had been a badminton court. <laughs> So it was a huge open wow. space with a balcony that looked right out over the whole of North London. It was kind of amazing. But if you get stuck, you know, you just go and look at what somebody else was doing, or you'd have lunch together and kind of kick around ideas. So that um, sense of give and take is really helpful. And you can get it from students, you can get mm -hmm. it from, from fellow artists, but you said you work in isolation, you work alone. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of that stimulation is helpful. Oh, definitely. Um, I, sometimes I felt more enthusiastic about their work than they did, and uh, <laughs> it was just because. Just, excuse me. Just let's just let's see a little more. Just keep going. And so. Yeah. Well, uh, I think. Are there? Oh, yeah. There's another. One. And forgive me because I don't hear very well, and I came in late. So maybe you've answered this. I think you touched on it. But if you're sitting down in front of a canvas and you're going to do. Let's say you're going to do Montauk. Are you in front of a blank canvas with nothing at all in front of you to remind you about it? You don't work from any sort of um, visual aid? Sometimes I, I look, the only thing I look at really is, a, uh, um, is usually um, an iPhone picture I've taken. Okay. And what I'm, look, what I'm interested in or what I want to see from that are, are maybe planes, um, sometimes color, but the color's never right. It's so, so I pretty much, um, it's, it's just what I want it to be. I am, yeah, and so perspective maybe, or? A little bit. Yeah. Or composition. Exactly, I mean, yeah, composition. Yeah, you want to get a sense of what, what's positioned where. Exactly. And then, of course, you can edit, too. Oh, thank you. Well, this is, this comp, this, this is unreal, this composition. But, and there's a bit of fiction involved in it as well. The, um, a bit of what? F fiction. Um, Never ruin a good story with the truth. Well, uh, <laughs> but, but it's, uh, um, again, it's, it's uh, when, when you travel all the way out there and, and, you're, and, the, and then the coast becomes a little more narrow, yes. it, it suddenly becomes steeper looking yes. than it actually is from yes. a distance. Uh, and, and, uh, um, and I, I took some, I was more interested in the thrust of, of the form of the, the, the cliff mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and some, 
Mm -hmm. Well, it was summer, sort of a, a sienna color, but, but uh, and some of the details are just sort of left as, as negative space again. The, the, the things on top could have been a, I seem to recall there may have been a, a cedar or a cypress up there. Um, well, you can, you're not, again, you're not trying to depict the landscape no. literally. You're not a topographer. You no. want to pick and choose the elements that appeal to you as an artist and then rearrange them however you like. Yes. No more questions. I just uh, want to say thank you to Eric and Helen. Oh, and uh, they'll be here to answer more questions individually. And please enjoy the food. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.